They are tearing down the stage. They are rolling up the red carpet. But Eli is still bringing us excellent Oscar coverage again this morning. And uh, good morning to you. Tell us about the winners. Good morning. I, an amazing evening for Leonardo DiCaprio. And as you said, after so many times being so close to that golden boy, six nominations, and then finally for that extreme performance as Hugh Glass, Leonardo DiCaprio taking home the Oscar for Best Actor. And it's so much to say in his acceptance speech, talking about his friend, Tom Hardy, his co-star in the film, talking about the director, Alejandro Inarritu, saying how he's forging history, now taking home two Oscar wins, and also spending some time to talk about how they had to move to the, to the, to the edge of the Arctic, basically, to find snow and talking about climate change. He's a very passionate environmentalist, very composed Leonardo DiCaprio, but obviously moved, finally getting that Oscar statue and then getting his name engraved later last night. But let's move on and talk about Room and another big winner last night, Brie Larson. This amazing movie based on the screenplay by Emma Donahue, who herself was surprised at the reaction to this story because it is a dark film, it is difficult to watch, and it has this amazing, strong female character and Brie Larson on this stage, soaking in the golden glow of the Oscars, paying tribute to the screenwriter, to her co-star, Jacob Tremblay. We heard how they used to play Lego on set. They bonded, actually doing arts and crafts, decorating the room in room. Uh, and then the best picture. And this is where there was a twist. I mean, I myself had been predicting The Revenant would take home the big trophy, but it was the movie about the uh, corruption scandal uncovered by the Boston Globe, uh, sexual abuse inside the Catholic Church, Spotlight winning the big award, also took home a uh, screenplay award. So an amazing night for Spotlight and somewhat unexpected one. Even in the press room when Spotlight was announced, you heard some gasps, a couple of cheers, but a lot of really shock. Everyone really thought it was going all the way for The Revenant. Eli, it was a night, as you were mentioning, for social causes, not just Leo DiCaprio's talk about climate change. We had LGBT issues uh, as part of, uh, part of the acceptance speech. We had Joe Biden, the U.S. vice president, talk about sexual violence on campus. All of these first, uh, front and center on stage. But, of course, the big issue was the diversity issue and Hollywood's lack of black nominees. How did the host tackle this issue? You know, that was, I think, really the biggest question going into this show, Heather. I mean, Chris Rock had said so little since the nominations were announced. We knew he, he tore up all his jokes and started writing from fresh. But he came out, white tuxedo jacket, to the tune of the rap group Public Enemy. I think the song might have been Don't Believe the Hype. And he let loose calling this year's Oscars the White People's Choice Awards. So he had a lot to say about racism in Hollywood, saying it does exist, kind of describing it like a sorority where black actors kind of don't belong to the right club. But what was interesting about Chris Rock is he didn't hold his fire. He also had some very pointed barbs at those who were calling for the boycott, including Jada Pinkett Smith and her husband, Will Smith. Take a look. I understand you're mad. Jada's mad. Her man, Will, was not nominated for concussion. I get it. I get it. Tell the truth. I get it. I get it. You get mad. She said it's, it's not fair that Will was this good and didn't get nominated. Yeah, you're right. It's also not fair that Will was paid $20 million for Wild Wild West, okay? <laughs> there you go. Ouch. So, yeah, maybe a good thing that Will Smith wasn't in the uh, theater last night. But that was just the beginning of really of the theme of diversity and a lot of really sharp pointed uh, comedic bits throughout the night. There was a sketch about kind of black actors being inserted into uh, in really well known uh, movies like uh, The Martian and uh, Joy. And then I think a really fascinating reality check where it was Chris Rock interviewing people people in Compton uh, about the Best Picture nominees. And many people never heard of these films. I will say, though, a couple missteps from Chris Rock. There was a Girl Guide cookie thing that went on way too long. And also, a really uh, tone-deaf joke about these young Asian uh, children that were on stage for one of the bits that just seemed, you know, considering the night is about diversity and, and, and you know, fighting racism, 
that that really kind of didn't play so well in the room or I think at home. Seemed a bit off. Okay, Eli, thank you. Listen, I hope they don't Bye. like take your camera and your podium and everything the way they're going. <laughs> There'll be nothing behind you by the time we that, finish our. We, <laughs> That we had to set up these just so that we don't get, you know, you might see me in a forklift the way things keep going. <laughs> okay, well, we'll check back with you next hour. Hopefully, Eli Glasner outside the Dolby Theatre, and we'll talk more about the reaction to Chris Rock a little bit later on with John. But in case you couldn't stay up until the bitter end, because it did go on till after midnight, some more on the winners. Fun to see how many have Canadian connections, so let's take a look again. Best Picture, Spotlight, as Eli mentioned, starring Canadian actress Rachel McAdams. Leonardo DiCaprio taking home Best Actor for The Revenant, a movie shot in Alberta. As Eli mentioned, the far northern reaches of Alberta, also scoring the Oscar for Best Director. Brie Larson, Best Actress for her performance in Room, based on the novel by Irish-Canadian author Emma Donoghue. She wrote the screenplay as well. Best Supporting Actor, Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies, such a terrific theater actor, stage performer, beating out Sylvester Stallone, sentimental favorite. Alicia Vikander winning Best Supporting Actress for The Danish Girl. She a bit of a surprise, uh, perhaps to some as well. So coming up as well on CBC News Network, we'll talk more about the diversity controversy and how Chris Rock went there, as the saying goes. We are watching what is still coming in, very strong reaction, and John will bring us that. First, take a look at this. Yes, it's all about film, but of course it's about fashion. And this year, there's the red carpet look. Feminine, white, lots of stunning dresses. There is Alicia Vikander. Could be Beauty's dress, couldn't it, from Beauty and the Beast. Charlize Theron, maybe she'll be on many people's best dressed. One of many with plunging necklines. There's Rachel McAdams there. Can we expect to see these things as trend? Full list of red carpet winners and losers posted online for you. Kate Blanchett, always a stunner at cbcnews.ca.